The Pittsburgh Pirates have been part of Major League Baseball since 1887 and currently have one of the longest World Series title droughts with their last championship coming in 1979. Kelly hits it in the air to center field. Moreno going toward right center makes the catch. Pittsburgh wins it. And so this team with its remarkable comeback capacity proved itself all over again. Throughout their franchise, Legendary players have made their impact in the Steel City. There she is. Papers flying. Everybody standing. The play. McGregor comes to him and it's a high fly ball in the deep right center field. Back to single and away back to the wall. It's gone. I don't know if his dad ever went 29 times without us. This one's deep to right. After losing the NL Championship Series to the Braves in 1992, the Pirates have only made the postseason three times. Excellence is a trait that defines Pittsburgh sports. And a new crop of pirates have boarded the ship to deliver Pittsburgh a championship it so rightly deserves. Join three dads on a console as we bring the pirates to glory in this MLB The Show 24 franchise. This year's Pirates team is looking to build on last year's 76 and 86 record, which found them fourth in the NL Central. In a division that is loaded with good young talent, Pittsburgh is looking to their own legion of young players like Mitch Keller, Key Brian Hayes, and O'Neill Cruz. Currently, the Pirates are under budget with their largest expense obviously being player salaries in 2024. I'm not sure how much that changes throughout the season as a lot of our younger players are currently under contract for the next couple of years. It will be interesting to see guys like Martin Perez pitch in a contract year knowing that Paul Skeens and Jared Jones, two highly touted prospects, are in AAA Indianapolis and ready to make the drive to Pittsburgh. Our goal this year is to make the playoffs something the Pirates haven't done since 2015 where they lost in the wildcard to the Chicago Cubs 4 to nothing in a one-game playoff. There are some definite areas of need for Pittsburgh, especially on the mound at starting pitching and at first base. Currently, we have no targets, but upgrading to a power hitting first baseman is a number one priority for me. PPI or prospect promotion incentive is brand new to MLB The Show 24. For those that don't know, this encourages teams to call up their best prospects and awards them with draft picks. It is possible that Paul Skeens will get a call to come to Pittsburgh, but I'm not going to rush any development for him or Jones for an extra draft pick. Our scouting staff is not very good this season. Despite having some very good drafts, we have left money in our scouting budget. And you know what? Let me back up a bit. Since this series is brand new to three dads on a console, I am a huge draft head. So having a good scouting team is very, very important to me. This current crop of scouts is not up to my standards, especially in efficiency and pitching. Do we have a crop of young pitching? Yes. Does that matter? No. My first move is to bring in Vinny Branham, a 10 year scouting vet that will excel in everything with a 90 efficiency, a 90 discovery and an 89 position player. Secondly, Carlton Nakamura replaces Hunter Gabriel. Carlton will focus on pitchers with his 98 overall rating and 94 in efficiency. Lastly, we dismissed Luis Thomas for Logan Garcia. Logan will be working on our pitchers with a 90 rating there and an 85 efficiency and an 81 discovery. So what we did is we overhauled our scouting department and it should be much, much better in 24. We have a lot of our bases covered, no pun intended, and should have detailed and accurate scouting reports when this draft rolls around. And with that, let's get this season underway here in Miami, Florida, as the Pittsburgh Pirates will take on the Miami Marlins in their 143rd opening day. As Pittsburgh is looking to right the wrongs that have happened to them the past few years and get themselves into the playoffs, it will start today. Here comes that gorgeous flyover in South Florida. It is a nice sunny day. The roof is open here, and these fans are looking for a Miami Marlins win the Miami Marlins finished 84 and 78 last season, clinching their first playoff berth since 2020, where they lost to the Philadelphia Phillies in a two game sweep, ending their season. So the Marlins will be looking to get back into the playoffs for the second year in a row. Let's quickly look at the Pittsburgh Pirates 2024 
preseason projections. Key Brian Hayes, the third base gold glove, should lead the team in average, batting 269. Jack Sawinski doing all the heavy lifting, leading the team in OPS with 27 home runs and 77 runs batted in. G1 Bay will steal 19 bases. And they're saying that Hayes will lead the team in war at 3.3. A projected record of 75 and 87 leaves these Pirates at fifth in the NL Central in not making the postseason, but we will see what happens with our first pitch coming up shortly. And taking the mound for the Marlins, Jesus Lazardo, 32 games last season, a 10 and 10 record, 3.58 ERA with 208 strikeouts in that 30.7% strikeout rate. Second baseman Jared Triolo start us off here and he is going to fly out to his counterpart over there at second base. Easy peasy there for the Marlins. Key Brian Hayes in a 1-2 count gets hit by Lazardo. He will be the first runner for the Pirates. Brian Reynolds steps in 3-1 count. Great eye there. Gets on base. O'Neill Cruz is going to fly out to left field. Runners do not advance. And that will bring up Edward Olivares. Olivares drives one high, drives one deep. That ball has some carry on it. Let's see what happens. So he's going to bounce off the wall. First runner scores. Here comes Hayes across. He is going to run across the plate for a 2-0 lead. First baseman Connor Joe steps in an 0-1 count. Just going to fly out to the shortstop. As we take a look at Mitch Keller, the young 2023 All-Star started 32 games last season, 13 and 9 record. He pitched 194 innings, 210 strikeouts, and that 421 ERA. The Pirates are hoping to get another good All-Star-like season from Keller this year. Let's take a look at Tim Anderson, the new Marlins stepping in. First pitch he sees, drives it into center field. Cut off by Michael A. Taylor. And the Marlins have a little bit of life. Brian De La Cruz looks at a strike. Keller's first strikeout of the game. One on one out. Lewis Arise stepping in. He drives one. Looks like into second, into short, excuse me. And Cruz is unable to make the routine throw. And in a one two count, Jake Berger sends one into the stands to give Miami a three to two lead early in this baseball game. His first home run of the season, 410 feet. Jake Berger gives Miami the lead. Let's see if Keller will settle down from that one. Jazz Chisholm Jr. stepping in. He will fly it out to Olivares there in left field. An easy play for the left fielder, Nick Gordon, in an 0-2 count with two outs. Will fly it out to Hayes at third base. But the damage was done from Jake Berger to give them a 3-2 to two lead at the end of the first inning. Top of the second, Andrew McCutcheon stepping in. McCutcheon's going to ground out to third base. Easy throw there. Yasmani Grandall stepping in for his first appearance as a Pirate. Ball will knock it down. An easy catch there by the right fielder. The center fielder, Michael A. Taylor, stepping in. We'll see what he can do. He is going to hit one pretty hard. We'll see if Chisholm can get there. Chisholm with a jump. Can't get there. Taylor... Looks like he is going to turn and head to second. An easy double there from Michael A. Taylor. If he kept running, he may have had three, but he did stop at first base. So the man on second, Jared Triolo, is just going to ground out to third. Should be a pretty routine play. And that is the end of the second. Josh Bell, the first baseman, swinging at a strike there. That's Keller's second strikeout. Jesus Sanchez is going to fly out to Olivares. In right field, we'll see if maybe Mitch Keller has settled down as Christian Bethencourt strikes out his third strikeout of the game. Top of the third and 0-1 count here on Key Brian Hayes. And a hard hit off the end of that bat. That ball is traveling. That ball is traveling. Chisholm going back, looking up, and it is gone. Put a notch on the dong report. Key Brian Hayes' first ding-dong of the season, a 404-foot cannonball shot. 
ties this baseball game up at 3-3. A beautiful hit there by Hayes. Not a lot of power in that bat, so it's good to see some pop early on in this season. Brian Reynolds will step in. He's going to hit a rope out there to Jesus Sanchez, but Sanchez easily grabs that one. O'Neill Cruz also going to right field, and Jesus Sanchez is drifting back, drifting back, about warning track power, but is able to corral it in. Olivares steps in with two outs, ropes that one right up the middle to get on base for a single. Connor Joe is going to step in. He is going to blast that one into about right center, and it looks like he will get a double. Men on second and third as McCutcheon steps up to the plate. He hits a soft liner out to Luis Arise at second base, and Arise is easily going to take this one in. But the damage has been done as Key Brian Hayes, excuse me, ties this baseball game up. The 404 foot rocket on the end of his bat. Pirates, Marlins, 3 3, mid third. 3 0 count, Tim Anderson will walk. We'll see what Brian De La Cruz can do. He strikes out. Jake Berger up, hits a rope over to Connor Joe, makes a nice stab at it, is able to knock it down and get it over to Mitch Keller for the second out. Jazz Chisholm drives in a run. Nick Gordon drives in a run as well. It looks like Chisholm rounding home. We'll see what Triolo can do. Triolo down to the plate. Grandel makes the tag and he's out. Now, top of the fourth here. Grandel, oh, beautiful play there at third base by Jake Berger. Berger makes a nice stab at it. Michael Taylor. See what he can do. He strikes out. Jared Triolo. That might drop, but no. Jesus Sanchez grabs that mid four. Still 5 3. Josh Bell stepping in. Meek. Meek fly out to Grandel out there in foul territory. Jesus Sanchez, see what he can do. He's going to pop it up to Olivares in left field. And Christian Bethencourt strikes out looking. Top five key, Brian Hayes hits a lofty, lofty pop up to Jazz Chisholm. Easy catch there for Chisholm. Brian Reynolds stepping in. Also looks like he's going to take that one into center field. We'll see if Chisholm can get there. He does get there. Pretty routine play. And O'Neill Cruz, he will drive that one hard and deep into the outfield. Grabbed by Nick Gordon. Keller having some trouble here, but a great play there by O'Neill Cruz in the bottom of the fifth. Brian De La Cruz ropes one past the diving Connor Joe. Looks like he will at least get a single out of this. Luisa Rice strikes out. Jake Berger, who had that huge home run earlier, going to get this one out to Jared Triolo. Triolo barely makes the play, but he does. Oh, and that is roped hard, deep, and gone. Jazz Chisholm extends this lead to 6-3 with his first home run of the season. Barely gets out of the park at 5, 356 feet, excuse me. And that is it. As Jose Hernandez comes in 50 games last season, a 1-3 record, a 4.97 ERA, get a strikeout rate of 31%. We'll see what he can do. Nick Gordon, a dribble out there to Connor Joe at first base. He's going to just flip it over to Hernandez. Josh Bell will get it also to Triolo. Triolo, a beautiful, easy play to, to first base. Jesus Sanchez will pop up to key Brian Hayes. So Hernandez comes in and shuts them down after the long ball from Chisholm. Triolo now up, gets it past the third baseman. Jake Berger is going to get on with a single. Triolo is going to go steal second base. A close play there at second, but Triolo is safe. His first stolen base of the season. We'll see what key Brian Hayes can do. Hayes is going to rope this one in for it looks like a double. Triolo will get down into home and make this a 6-4 to four ball game. 6th of Sanchez coming in. So that is the day for Jesus Lazardo. See what 6th of Sanchez can do. Seven games last season, a 3-2 record, 3.46 ERA. Brian Reynolds now on the other side of the plate. Ropes this one deep. Is this gone? No, that is going to get down, but it, it will be a ground rule double. So it's now a 6-5 game. O'Neill Cruz stepping in. We'll see what O'Neill can do. 
This one is just going to get out of the reach of Josh Bell. Here comes Brian Reynolds from second base. Ties this ball game up. Olivares stepping in. Olivares driving this one into center field. So men on second and first. And that's it for Sixto Sanchez in and out as Anthony Bender will come in to stave off the Pirates. 22 games last season. A 1-3 record. Three holds. A 3.26 ERA and a 25% strikeout record. Connor Joe, the first baseman, see what he can do. He strikes out looking, but this is a 6-6 ball game. Dory Moretta in now. Dory Moretta striking out Christian Bethencourt. Tim Anderson drive this one out to Olivares. Olivares out in left field makes a pretty easy catch. And then Brian De La Cruz will strike out swinging. So a great seventh inning for Moretta. Top of the 10th now. It's still 6-6. Michael Givens will face Edward Olivares. Olivares will hit this one out into dead center. And that will allow O'Neill Cruz to tag up and go to third base. Safe on the throw. Very close there. See what Connor Joe can do. Joe rifles this one into deep right center as the Pirates will take a 7-6 lead. Connor Joe will head to second base. As David Bednar comes in, Bednar, 66 games last season. He was 39, saves on 42 opportunities. Two flat ERA, 32% strikeout rate. We'll see what he can do for his first save opportunity of the season. Gets Christian Bethencourt to fly out to Brian Reynolds in right field. The runner will advance the third base as Tim Anderson steps in. Set himself a pretty decent game right now, one for three. And the signal from the bench is they are going to intentionally walk him, looking for that double play. We'll see what Brian De La Cruz can do. One for four now. He strikes out Bednar. His first strikeout of the day. And Luis Arise. Arise is going to fly this one out to Michael Taylor. And this should be it for your Pittsburgh Pirates. They come back from a 5-3 to three deficit at one point to win this game. 7-6. to six. If you enjoyed this game, please leave us a like. Drop us a sub. This is going to be something that we'll be doing all baseball season. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Three Dads on a Console. And your boy... Pizzell 56X saying goodbye. We'll see you next time here on the show.